If you clicked on this video, then that means you want to become a better, more profitable sports better when it comes to MMA. And we're going to give you five tips to make sure that you win money every time you guys hit the sports books. So at number one, we have familiarize yourself with the props and the app. So you're going to have things like the over-unders, which for a lot of times in other sports, those are going to be point-based. Over-unders in MMA are round base so over under it's usually one and a half two and a half and then it can go up to the uh, main fights three and a half or four and a half you want to make sure when you're doing these type of bets so if you take a over two and a half in a fight and it is a three round fight it might have okay value but you can get better value if you go further into the fight go to the uh, round props fight props and you're going to find something like a fight to go the distance. And that's going to be even better than the over two and a half. If you don't think that there's going to be a finish in that last two and a half minutes of the fight, then why would you take the extra juice and take the over where you can just take the go the distance? Don't have to choose this type of fighter. Don't have to choose any of that. I think one of the worst picks that you can do, taking the plus or minus three and a half points, that's buying points on the judges' scorecards. That is only going to help you most of the time if it goes to decision. And if there's a finish, if your fighter gets finished, then that bat's out the window you lost it that's only going to help you in decisions that are within three points and probably the biggest prop bet that people do in mma is going to be method of victory which is going to be your knockouts your subs and your decisions which leads us to our second biggest point be aware of styles and use it to help with your props bobby why don't you elaborate on this one yeah so this is pretty self-explanatory and i'll give some examples to break it down if you're betting on shara magomedov coming up in a fight you know that he can get the knockout in his fight, but he's not really a one-punch knockout kind of guy. He gets that through a gradual accumulation of uh, strikes over the course of the fight that leads to the knockout. So if you ever bet on Shara, Shara Bullet, this could help you because knowing that about his style and how he's a volume-based striker, you could go for a KO, TKO, but you could do something like in two and a half rounds of a three-round fight or something. And then, you know, that's going to have a pretty good chance of hitting if it gives you good odds because he's not going to be somebody who just comes out in the first round and just cold clock somebody with one shot. Uh, if somebody's a wrestler and they use heavy takedowns in their game, you could find some really intriguing over-unders on how you think the takedowns are going to land in a fight. If they're especially going up against somebody who has known suspect takedown defense, they're going to be a prime mark to get taken down early and often consistently throughout the fight. And if they are not somebody who looks for the sub, then you could probably get some control time bets uh, associated with that as well. If they do look for the sub, you can try to figure out when they most commonly get the sub based off their fights and do a prop bet based on how long you think it's going to take them to get the sub. So you could do sub by itself, KO, TKO by itself, decision by itself. You could get as specific as how many rounds you think it's going to happen. Uh, for decisions, if you think it's going to be a split decision, there are certain fighters out there that no matter who they fight, when they fight, for whatever reason, they just attract split decisions like a magnet. Uh, that's like your Tabitha Ricci's, your Angela Hills. If you bet on them and there's some really good odds on split decisions, it's always worth throwing some money out on. So yeah, styles, it's just all dependent. If you got like somebody who's a one-punch knockout artist, then you're going to want to think that it's going to end early. Uh, unless you just think somebody they're going up against has an iron chin and you can get better odds on that person surviving, use that to your advantage as well. You can really play the game either way with these styles and prop bets, however you want to be able to go your way, depending on what you know about the fighters. Like if an iron chin guy goes up against a heavy puncher and you really think that they can uh, – you know, withstand that barrage, you're probably going to get a better payout on that than just going with uh, what everybody else is doing, saying the guy's going to get flatlined in round one. And that's a really good way to make money with that. That leads perfectly into our third point, Bobby, which is understanding what divisions mean and what the over-unders and finish rates are. That is why we're seeing some of the shortest time of fights are currently with Tom Aspinall, and we see that a lot with the heavyweight division. Those numbers are going to be a lot lower. Those are going to be the one and a half rounds uh, over under that you see there because heavyweight, disproportionately from all the other fights, those end and finishes a lot. Those are the knockouts. We see Tai Tuivasa, Rosenstrike, Tom Aspinall are all getting these crazy finishes, getting them done early with these knockouts. And then we see the light guys. We see like Pantoja, which is an absolutely an incredible fighter 
But we're seeing him go to decision over and over and over again. And that's just because we're, we see these lighter weights. They go longer. So you need to know that for your over and unders and for your prop bets. Know where you're at, where these fighters are at. And that's going to really help you kind of gauge which direction you need to go. If you're looking at a women's fight, once again, no knock on women's MMA. But those go to decision a lot more often. And it's it's just a fact uh, of the business, fact of the fight. If you see this line, maybe sit at one and a half. I can't imagine what that line would be for women's MMA if it said a one and a half. It'd probably be like minus 600, 800, but that's just one of the things with it. These are little things that if you know, you can really take advantage of. Uh, but one of the most dangerous things, I would say not to buy points, Bobby, is doing MMA math. And some people might not understand what that means. No, we're not adding numbers. Bobby, what is MMA math? Yeah, so MMA math is the most common problem I see a lot of people new to sports betting on MMA make, which is where you're looking at uh, common opponents in a matchup between two fighters. You're looking at their common opponents and you're saying, well, if fighter A beat, you know, uh, this so-and-so elite fighter historically, but, you know, fighter B lost to that exam exact same fighter when they, uh, you know, went up against them then that means obviously fighter A is clearly going to beat fighter B, you know, because they have that uh, historically shared opponent and fighter A just absolutely destroyed them and, you know, B got flatlined by them. That's, that seems like it would be a viable strategy, but here's right. why it's not. Like common opponents is, is easy because everybody can recognize, oh, these two guys have both fought Dan Hooker. One lost to Dan Hooker, the other uh, beat Dan Hooker. But here's why it's not viable. So the way you fight somebody when you're game planning and watching tape and everything is heavily dependent on how your style matches up with their style. Like somebody's not going to fight the same person how you fought them because their style is not your style and vice versa. So I'm trying not to give specific examples to not make this irrelevant and dated, but there's so many examples. If you just do a ridiculous amount of MMA math with how people move up and down divisions and the history of the divisions and MMA is still a young sport, eventually you could get to the point by using that logic of this person beat this person, which beat this person, which beat this person. You could get it to where like Mighty Mouse would be able to beat Brock Lesnar <laughs> because of all their common opponents that they've had throughout their history. There's even a calculator for it. It's called MMA Math Calculator. It's pretty fun to mess around with and plug wow. somebody in and see who they can uh, beat. So do that sometime in your free time. But what I'm getting at is you have to take every matchup based off their styles. Are they a grappler? Are they a striker? Are they a volume-based striker? Are they a one-punch knockout striker? Is the person they going up against iron chin? Like it goes into the be aware of the divisions that feeds off of all that because you can't fight a person the same time every time mma is a game about maximizing your strengths uh maximize your strengths and maximize your opponent's weaknesses you have to find what is weak in their game and exploit it while making yourself and your strength stronger and yeah you just can't rely upon that because mma is also full of so many crazy outcomes and styles just match up wild like Two strikers going up against each other, okay, the better, more technical striker might beat them, but if you throw a grappler in, that doesn't automatically mean the striker is going to win. Sometimes, most oftentimes, the grappler beats the striker, even if the striker is a more accomplished striker than the grappler is a grappler. It, it's just if you have bad takedown defense and somebody's got really strong takedowns, they're going to take you down. That's just how the fight plays out. It doesn't matter if you're ranked higher in the division than the grappler. And then you're number six and everybody's counting out the grappler because they're number 15. If the grappler is able to impose their will and take the striker down, it's going to be a long night for the striker. Uh, if you got, you know, like a world champion Muay Thai guy at number six and he's going up against uh, a lesser ranked Muay Thai guy, yeah, that might help. But the number 15 ranked Muay Thai guy could still knock out the number six uh, Muay Thai guy in the world. It just depends. It depends on how the styles match up what they like to throw, what their opponent is susceptible to, and how they're able to capitalize on that. You know, just having a common opponent just depends on who the opponent is and how they fought them and if the other person can replicate because there's been – I will give this one example to help flesh it out as like a little brief history thing. People thought because Habib beat the ever-loving crap out of Edson Barboza that when Kevin Lee did it to Edson Barboza, Kevin Lee was going to be like the next thing of Habib Nurmagomedov. 
Kevin Lee had a good career, but he was not Habib level. So it's like they both beat him in a very similar style, but you know their their wins over that guy were not indicative of their career trajectory like people would have you believe when it happened. So there's your little history lesson. I like it, Bobby. And if you're thinking all this stuff, like it's so similar and it's like stacking on top of each other. It's like, yeah, this is the foundation for winning bets and building a winning portfolio about MMA. So all this stuff is connected. And if you do all of it together, that is how you win money. And which is a perfect segue to our fifth point. And that is that Vegas feasts on the public and big names. A couple weeks ago, we had, at the time of this video, um, Israel Adesanya and Drikus Duplessis. Duplessis is the champion at the, at the time of filming, and Israel Adesanya was the bigger name. So everybody knew Israel Adesanya, Drikus won. And Drikus wasn't the champion. He faced Sean Strickland. Sean Strickland was the big name. He was saying all the crazy stuff. He was all over social media. Drikus won that fight. We look back at Islam Makachev versus Dustin Poirier. Islam's been like like the pound for pound best fighter and a champion for a long time. But Poirier has way more followers. And the money came in on Poirier and Poirier lost. And you just see this time and time and time again. And whenever it's two guys like Pereira and Hill, those money lines are going to be a lot closer and then you see the times when it's Bo Nickel at minus 1,800, Nurmagomedov at minus 1,600. They know these are the big name guys, and money is going to come flooding in on these dudes. So we need to like completely blow these odds out of the water. And I think that's something very, very important to remember, is that if you see these guys that are really big name guys, and the odds are pretty close, <laughs> be wary. Be very wary of that because they just feast on the big names of the sport that come in. Uh, Tony Ferguson, I think people were pretty much, you know, they were done with Tony. And then he got uh, Michael Chiesa, pulled people back in, and it, it just didn't happen. These big name guys draw money no matter where they are in their career, and it's just easy for Vegas to feast on. Yeah, just definitely be aware of that and – uh you know, there could be examples like in the future, hello, from the future where this works out with some cards we have coming up soon. Uh, we'll have to see on who the hot name is. But, yeah, just uh, like you said, be just kind of be aware of who's got the got the hot hand and just kind of look at that a little closer and see if it's justified or not. Because sometimes it is, like with Bo and Habib, very justified to have but them. But they're not the going to let you – they're not going to let you make money off of it. You're going to have right. to throw You're not a make money off on. Of right. But there's some – like, uh, depending on where you can get it, there's some names out there, though, that could potentially be ripe for a fall. You just have to be very careful. Very careful. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And people bet the people that they know. If they say, like, even <coughs> if you barely know a guy, if they're familiar and you have no clue who the other guy is, sometimes it's right. easy to just throw five bucks on them. But that is so often the bets that lose. Right, right. Bobby, do you have anything else that is crossed your mind during the filming that you think people need to know to be more profitable sports bettors? Those are kind of just the basic best five foundational skills. I'm sure we'll improve and expand upon this in the future, but for right now, just your crash course, short, sweet, to the point. Those are the best five foundational you can start with. Uh, MMA is difficult to bet on, in my humble opinion, compared to other sports. There's so many different factors. I do actually have one last theme to add to this, and I do think this is important, especially for newbies starting off. MMA is the only sport where the score can literally change in the last second. You can't catch up from a huge deficit in any other sport. In MMA, you literally can have a last-second knockout, last-second sub, whatever the case may be. So be aware of that. Uh, you know, be aware that that can happen. But number one, don't put a lot of hope in that happening because it's very rare. And oftentimes when somebody's getting beat up that bad, they just continue to get beat up and they lose the fight. So don't put all your eggs in that basket thinking a Hail Mary KO or subs always going to happen. And number two, even when it does come up out of nowhere and it does disappoint you or ruin your parlay or whatever, that just goes back to your basic gambling 101. Don't let it ruin you. 
don't let it make you down and depressed and everything, you know, just keep your head up and just recognize it as an outlier. Absolutely, Bobby. And if there was a sixth point that we could put on about um, listening to um, where people should go to get their MMA advice, what would you say their sixth uh, point to be profitable at MMA is? Who to go to for advice? Yeah. Oh, it's rhetorical. It's us. It, it's and what is it called? Say it. Say um, it for the people. It's better and green. It's a channel you're on right now. Better and green, and that those shows are called Tapping Vegas. One of the best names too on us on social media on YouTube right now, guys. Bobby at the time of filming has hit back to back plus six hundred and plus four fifty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. If you like money and you want to bet on MMA, take what you learned here and then go listen to us in these uh, future episodes because we would love to have you. We'd love to talk to you and get to know you guys and uh, make some money together. So thank you guys for watching. Bobby, I appreciate you being here. And we'll see you guys over at Tapping Vegas on Better and Green. Peace.